Hello and welcome to AV Cyber Active. Today's topic of discussion is going to be load balancers and how they work. If you are anywhere close to the networking or the security industry, you get thrown around by the term load balancers all the time. So today I'm going to cover only the basics of what load balancer means, how it works on different algorithms and the pros and cons of deploying a load balancer. Let's get started. Now by definition, load balancing refers to efficiently distribute the incoming network traffic across all the backend servers. For example, modern day high traffic to your edge devices have to serve millions of requests per minute and they have to cost effectively be scaled to meet the demand. So in this scenario, we introduced load balancers as traffic cop sitting right in front of the servers to effectively load balance and distribute the traffic according to the end server's utilization. This way, your load balancer is achieving three main functions. First, that it's distributing client requests or network load efficiently across multiple servers. Second, it is ensuring that high availability and reliability is there so that no one server is over occupied or overloaded. Third, it provides the flexibility to add or reduce servers as the demand comes in. Now, having load balancers is an excellent idea to load balance the traffic in your network. But have you ever thought how many types of load balancers are there? There are two types, software-based and hardware-based. For hardware-based, the vendors of hardware-based solutions load proprietary software onto the machine they provide, which often uses specialized softwares and processors. And to cope with the increasing traffic at your website, you might have to buy one or more bigger machines from the vendor. Now, hardware-based devices are physical devices that are specifically designed for load balancing. They offer high performance and can handle a massive amount of traffic. However, they can be costly and might not be as flexible as software-based lost load balancers. These are purpose-built appliances optimized for high performance and low latency. They can handle large amount of traffic very efficiently. On the other hand, software-based load balancers generally run on commodity or custom-made hardware, making them less expensive or more flexible. You can install the software on the hardware of your choice or even in your cloud environment. Software-based load balancers are typically implemented as virtual appliances or as a part of a server's operating system. They are more cost-effective and easier to scale compared to the hardware-based load balancers. Now, have you ever thought about how the load balancers work? Well, they're machines and they have built-in algorithms that makes them run. Let's check five of them one by one on load balancers. The first one and the most simplest of all the algorithms is the round robin. So the round robin algorithm evenly distributes incoming traffic to each server in a circular manner. Each server gets its turn to handle a request and the cycle repeats all over again. This algorithm is pretty straightforward to implement and ensures a relatively balanced distribution of load across all your servers. Second algorithm is based on least connections. So the least connections algorithm directs traffic or incoming request to the server with fewest active connections. It aims to distribute traffic based on the current server load, ensuring that heavily loaded servers receive fewer new requests as compared to the less busy ones. Third, weighted round robin. In weighted round robin, each server is assigned a weight or a priority on its capacity and capabilities. So the servers with higher weights receive a proportionally larger share of incoming requests. This allows administrators to allocate more resources to powerful servers and balance the load accordingly. 
So what it means that your load balancer already knows which servers are capable of handling more traffic and redirects traffic to them so that the load is balanced efficiently. Fourth one, it's based on least response time. So the least response time algorithm directs traffic to the server with the lowest response time. This approach optimizes response time for users by sending their request to the server that can re respond more quickly. You would find these kind of deployments where response times are more prominent like stock market and banking industry. And the last algorithm is based on least bandwidth. So the least bandwidth algorithm directs requests to the server with least amount of current traffic in terms of bandwidth utilization. This approach is suitable for scenarios where available bandwidth on each server differs significantly. For example, Netflix or your video streaming platforms which are geographically distributed. So is the load balancer's job to serve its customers with the load coming in and redirect the traffic where bandwidth is least consumed. Hope that was clear. Now, obviously, since a new device has been introduced in the network, it will have its advantages and disadvantages. Let's go through them one by one. First, beginning with the advantage of the load balancers is improved performance. It evenly distributes traffic across multiple servers, preventing overload and reducing the response times. Second advantage, scalability. It easily scales the infrastructure by adding or removing servers as the demand fluctuates. What it means that if additional servers are introduced, the load balancer, if configured correctly, will have no problems distributing the traffic across all the servers. Third one, high availability and kind of easy to understand that it ensures continuous service availability by redirecting traffic to the healthy servers if one of the servers fail. Fourth one, Traffic management. It allows intelligently routing or redirecting certain requests to specialized servers based on the content or user needs. You would see them happening in banking environment. Session continuity is important. So the traffic will be intelligently redirected to the server where the session is persistently maintained. And the last advantage, which is my favorite one, that it offloads SSL encryption and decryption tasks from server, reducing their workload and improving performance. So if you're a network administrator, you might consider this option so that your servers can take some load off of doing the encryption and decryption and the server or the load balancer, which is sitting right front of the web internet, can take some of the SSL encryption and decryption job. Now, let's have a look at some of the disadvantages of deploying a load balancers. Though there aren't many, but some I'll go ahead and discuss them today. Number one, that it serves as a single point of failure. So if the load balancer itself fails, it can bring down the entire system. So if you're a network admin, once again, you might consider deploying failover mechanisms on your load balancer systems as well. Second disadvantage, complexity. So implementing and managing load balancers can get complex pretty soon, requiring you to have experienced administrators, staff, giving them salary, maintaining the power, and so on, hence and so forth. It, so you see how it can get complex really soon. Third, this advantage, and this is something we come across on a daily basis, that is certain applications will require session continuity, which can be challenging to achieve with some load balancing algorithms. Fourth one, overhead. Now, obviously, load balancers will introduce some additional overload and latency in your network path. Although with the modern load balancers, this is no longer an issue and they can balance the traffic in a very efficient and usually are very fast. 
Last disadvantage of using a load balancer is that its scalability bottlenecks. If not provisioned or estimated correctly, load balancers they themselves can become bottlenecks in the network. So it is really important to take into consideration the number of load balancers, the failover mechanisms, and the number of servers with the incoming traffic you'd be having in your network so you can avoid these kind of scalability bottlenecks. Hope that was clear. Now, undoubtedly, load balancers are powerful tools that play a vital role in ensuring smooth and efficient operations in modern day web applications and server infrastructure. They distribute traffic preventing overload and enhance the overall system reliability. However, they come with their own set of limitations that must be carefully be considered during the design phase and implementation phase. Now that's all for today's video. We hope you've enjoyed learning about load balancers and their functionalities. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, please let me know in the comment sections down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more exciting tech related content. Until next time, happy load balancing. Bye now.